Hello, everyone. My name is Lucas. I'm with Business Development here at Easy Software, and I will be the host of today's Easy Project webinar. Thank you for taking the time and spending it with us. We sincerely appreciate it. I've got a colleague with me for this webinar, a longtime key member of our product team. Regular attendees might know him already. His name is Jan Rzeczycha. Hello, Jan. Hello. We want to do a, as usual, a streamlined, cohesive webinar, something like 30 to 35 minutes. As mentioned already, the webinar is being recorded and is going to be shared later as well. So in case you would like to share it with your colleagues or rewatch it later on, both will be possible. I would like to encourage you to speak to our consultant for more details and questions. There is always someone available to help you out. If you've already opened a trial account over at easyproject.com, I'm sure that one of those will be in touch with you soon if, if they haven't already. Please challenge us with your questions and do not hesitate to ask tough ones. That's basically what I'm saying. Let's go through the agenda for today. I want to do a quick summary of Easy Software News, just so you know what we have been cooking up in the company. We're going to move on to an overview of changes or new features in version 12 of Easy Project. Just in case uh, someone might be wondering, it's not going to be like a proper demo. We're just going to go through what we've changed. So just so people that are experienced with our previous versions can see the benefit. But by all means, if this is your first interaction with Easy Project, uh, stick around because it's going to be uh, just as just as interesting. Throughout the presentation or throughout the webinar, you are able to ask questions. Only I would ask you to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom application. The icon is like two comic bubble chat icons next to each other. Please use that one because you're asking questions and answering it through the chat is usually not the most user-friendly thing. We're going to address the Q&A after the, after the presentation, and then we're going to do some form of closing, or we can call it additional information just before we call it a day. So moving on to Easy Software News. I would say when it comes to Easy Project, our biggest advantage has always been the flexibility and adaptability of the software itself. None of that is changing. We're still a complex project management platform in the best sense of the word. We can do both traditional and agile project. We have plenty of visual reporting or customizations for the best user experience. And we can sort of extend the platform towards help desk and CRM as well uh, on top of all the project management tools that you might need. That's generally the, the road that we have decided to, we decided to take several years ago and we've been sticking to it ever since. Our software is obviously constantly being upgraded. The version 12 is the major release for this year. We're sticking to the plan where we release one major version every year, plus there are some minor versions in between. The official release for existing clients is planned for mid-September, plus there's going to be like a short time period in which we will be rolling out these updates to our cloud clients. However, if you go to our website, once again, easyproject.com and start a trial, you will start a trial of version 12. The version 12 is already present on our trial accounts. So if you want to test it out after the webinar, by all means, uh, you are definitely encouraged to do so. I'm also going to post the landing page for version 12 into the chat after I'm done speaking. For those of you that are interested, just so you can refresh a bit on the information once we've done. However, we're planning a few other things at the same time. Everything else gets a facelift. We're doing a rebranding project to make ourselves 2023 compliant, if you will. I'm using the word facelift because we're keeping main aspects of our marketing and business the same. Even though the rebranding is going to be very noticeable for close clients and partners, we're making sure to keep our identity to avoid like any potential confusions across whoever has been using Easy Project. You'll notice a new website, logo, messaging, basically all marketing. Nothing changes in our approach. Nothing changes in our services. So once again, open trial accounts, talk to our consultants, get a demo, ask questions specific to your business so we're not wasting anyone's time. That's my main message for today. And I think at this point, it is probably time for my co-host to take over. 
after all, the, this is the purpose of the webinar to talk about version 12. And Jan is going to share a little bit more about it. I'm just going to remind if you're going to have any questions throughout this presentation, use the Q&A button and we'll get to it after, after this presentation. Okay, thanks, Lukash. Uh, just confirm for me that you see the screen with the release note. I can confirm. Okay, good. Uh, so hello, everyone, and uh, let's start. Uh, so um, I will go through the release notes of the version 12. Uh, you can obviously find, find them on the web. If you just type in easy project version 12 major release or something like that, you will uh, definitely find them. And I have a trial over here and we will use that to demonstrate the highlights of uh, version 12. So starting with the technological stack, um, easy project is, uh, Redmine compatible. You can upgrade to Easy Project from Redmine, uh, the latest Redmine of version five. We are running on Ruby. We've upgraded our database to Percona eight, and the latest addition to our technological stack is Node.js that is now in the version eighteen. Uh, since uh, for the Current clients, since this is a major release of version 12, we really recommend to uh, be careful with the migration of the version 11. There are a few recommendations from our support team on how to do it the best. Uh, in version 12, uh, as Lukash mentioned, the redesign and rebranding of the company, we also focused on redesign of the application itself. So we have the new main blue color, we have the new uh, login page, uh, top menu, different fonts and stuff like that. Uh, so you, in the release notes, you can find a small comparison of version 12 uh, and version 11. The most notable change uh, as for the design goes with our crucial forms uh, for the new task and for the update task. So I will, switch to the trial and show you what the new task uh, currently looks like. Um, you can see that uh, there is the most important inf information at the top. So subject description, you have additional attributes just below that. We tried to streamline the information on, on the task. So it is basically in one box. Uh, so all of it can be found pretty easily, uh, just as you are used to the forms on the web. Uh, we've also changed and improved the navigation uh, in the task because obviously we are supporting a lot of different formats of custom fields uh, that can make the form for the task pretty big. But we added these anchors that help you to navigate and to scroll through the task. Uh, also, there is this area for drag and dropping your attachments that is sticky uh, over here. So that's one big change in the design. Uh, also, we've updated the other important um, forms in the application, like a form for logging the time. So, it's, so it looks a little better compared to our uh, previous versions. Uh, going back to my release notes, um, navigation bar, that's what we mentioned, lock time was mentioned as well. Uh, also, you could probably uh, notice that we've tried to get rid of unnecessary uh, buttons and visual elements uh, in the design. So, for example, these buttons to navigate the modules are just hidden under these three dots. And that leads me to one of the highlights of uh, version 12 that, uh, that is new uh, version of dynamic filters. Uh, dynamic filters is basically a query or a table view uh, that is used for a few entities. Uh, dynamic filters are not the default view for the tasks, but you can switch to them uh, at any time. Uh, 
the limitation of dynamic filters is obviously it's newer technology so it's not uh, available on all the entities like projects and tasks uh, right now but for those main entities projects tasks spend time and users uh, we have the dynamic filters and so what's new in the dynamic filters uh, in version 12 uh, again you can see the design changes uh, on top of that we are supporting uh, ability to customize uh, certain attributes of the task uh, as for its color so you can see that if I uh, open the list of statuses for the task, uh, you can see different color coding that is uh, possible to set up in the administration. It obviously helps uh, users to navigate a little easier in the application. Um, we are using that for task statuses, task priorities, and task types. So that's important. Uh, also, based on the feedback, we've changed a little bit the behavior of the main column for each entity. So in the example of tasks, when you click on the task subject, instead of being able to rename the task, you get the, the task show, uh, the modal view of the task that allows you to do the main uh, operations with the task uh, pretty quickly. Uh, next big feature for the uh, dynamic filters is uh, being able to save different views. So you can see that I have different saved filters over here. So this is the complete list uh, where I see all the public saved filters or saved views, uh, private, uh, specific to my role, specific to my user type, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If some of these uh, saved queries or saved filters are super important to me, I can uh, pin them. Uh, let's select, for example, these tasks closed by me last seven days. Let's say if uh, this was important to me, uh, I could just hit this uh, pin button and the saved filter will stay for me here at the top and I can access that uh, very uh, easily. I would say that's a radical change to version 11 because in version 11, if you wanted to have, uh, let's say, different task views on your homepage, you needed to use a separate page module for each of these. Now with version 12, you can only have just one module per entity. So let's say one view for the tasks. This is the default view that will be loaded every time when you uh, access the homepage, but you can very easily switch to different views that you might be uh, interested in. So that, uh, that makes it just one module uh, showing the tasks per your homepage. Okay. Uh, so that was about dynamic filters, and I will move on to the second highlight and the biggest feature of version 12, and that is agile uh, resource management. So I'm uh, going to this top. Uh, so agile resource management, uh, it's a new uh, module that uh, allows you to manage your resources, more specifically your projects, uh, teams and people. Uh, it's a different feature than the previous resource management that we already had. I would call the old resource management to be bottom up and this uh, new agile resource management to work top down. And so what it has, uh, it basically has three views. Uh, first, I have the view through the projects. So here on the left, I can see project phase one client zone, and I can see when I'm working on that project. Uh, second view uh, is through teams. So over here on the left, I have red team of developers and blue team of consultants. Uh, and I see what projects they are working on through the perspective of the teams. Uh, and finally, uh, last view is the personal view. So I can see each separate uh, member uh, of the company and what projects uh, they are working on. And there are a lot of small cool stuff about uh, this module. So uh, let's take a look at them. Uh, there is an integrated uh, skill management. 
So each uh, individual has a set of skills uh, which we can which we can edit. Uh, on top of that, we are obviously able to filter out by those skills. So I would be able, for example, to select a filter for skills and filter just some people with uh, a certain skill. Over here with these thread indications, you see a connection to the resource management. So you can plan your work according to uh, the actual availability of the people according to the vacation. Okay. Uh, moving on to the teams. Uh, you can see all the skills displayed over here. So you know what are the senior members of your team and who are the junior members so you can plan your projects uh, accordingly. Uh, if you want to create a new team, obviously it's possible uh, with this button, you can upload some logo, assign a color. Uh, you can define the type of the team that is uh, customizable via the administration. Uh, and we are, it's agile resource management. So we are basically um, supporting the scrum work um, via this module so you can also set uh, information about how your sprints are structured which then uh, translates to this daily view where you can see when the teams have their sprints and obviously there is also the connection to the um, to the attendance so you see uh, vacations of those people uh, uh, okay and Moving back to the to the projects, uh, it's obviously possible to uh, combine those projects and teams in uh, different manners. So, for example, over here you can see that uh, this project, phase one, client zone development, is uh, assigned to the red team of developers. But probably the red team of developers is lacking some kind of uh, skill. So. Um, just for this project, we are also adding uh, this Jenny developer that might have uh, the specific skill that is needed for the project. And uh, the project phase one is then reflected in the red team as the project for the whole team. And on the personal view uh, for Danny developer, again, this is uh, reflected as the project that he's working on. So from the personal perspective, you can combine a work that uh, is within the team and the work that is outside of the team just for a specific project. So again, very flexible, very adaptive to, uh, to your needs. Um, I want to mention uh, that this agile resource management is based on the main agile values and principles. Uh, we believe that these agile values and principles are focused on people and collaboration in the team, uh, decentralization, or let's say self-managed team, uh, focus on one topic and being able to respond to a change quickly. And that translates to the features. Uh, by the way, that um, you are very quickly able to change the allocations or the, yeah, the highlights of what the teams are working on. It's super quick, it saves immediately, so you are able to respond uh, to a change. Uh, there is no connection between agile resource management and tasks. This is only per project or only translates to a project. Uh, as I said, this is top-down planning. So we assume that we will not have the tasks yet in the project when we are planning those projects in agile resource management. That's in contrast to the old resource management we, when we, where we need all the tasks and estimations, which is often unrealistic and uh, might be a little bit of micromanagement, which uh, bringing me back to agile resource management, that is the new feature. It's uh, the micromanagement is something that we are trying to avoid. So, um, Probably just to sum it up, uh, to show you that we still have the old resource management that is very useful in some situations when we have the, uh, let's say, fixed scope of the project and we are, when we are able to work from bottom up. Uh, 
So again, all resource management still there, still can work with the tasks and still can assign the estimated times uh, to the tasks that then sum up from bottom to up uh, to give you uh, allocations about the users and see their, their uh, actual workload. Uh, there was probably it for the agile resource management. And since we um, uh, uh, translated to the older features, there are several smaller improvements into the older features that we have. So you can see here for the resource management, the old resource management and the Gantt view, we had uh, new options to view quarters and years. So these are available to you now. And I will just quickly run you through more smaller changes that are part of the version 12 that might attract your attention. Um, there is a GitHub integration. We already had the GitLab uh, integration for a few months on, or years. Now uh, in version 12, it's available to connect and integrate with uh, GitHub uh, as well. Uh, quarters and years uh, was already mentioned. Uh, there is a new feature in the mind maps, which allows you to move a mind map from project A to project B. Uh, very useful uh, if you, if you, and it also also allows you to copy the mind map, so you can have let's say kind of a template and then copy it and uh, reuse it in some different project. Uh, I'm not sure if I've already skipped that, but. Um, there is a very often requested uh, change in the CK editor. I will show it over here. Uh, you can see that the CK editor, which is the main input in the application, have uh, a few more features. You are able to align the text uh, left, center, right. Uh, when you start typing uh, dash, uh, it will aut automatically create uh, bullet points for you. And there is uh, also the source editing option. So you can change uh, HTML of the, of the file. Okay, scrolling down with the release notes, uh, several smaller changes into the help desk. Ability to change more fields straight from the project overview. For example, the project manager can now be uh, changed straight from there. A uh, little new feature in the two factor um, settings. We can set up two factor authentication just for administrators, which might be useful. We can set up two factor authentication also for just a group of people. Uh, And I think by that, um, we are close to the end. So, Lukash, do you think uh, I forgot any important feature? No, I don't think so. I mean, we wanted, there's definitely much more to talk about when it comes to this. I guess I can encourage our clients, the potential clients, to go to easyproject.com. Uh, on the top side, let me take a look. If they go into services and change log, they can actually read a little bit more in detail what we've changed. That might be interesting for some. Other than that, we don't have any questions today, which helps us severely to, to stick close to our 30 minute plan. So yeah, I guess from my side of the table, I would like to mention again that the version 12 is already available on our trial account so if you go to easyproject.com and start a trial you will get to test the version 12 contact one of our sales consultants and get a demo have them present the software to you challenge them with your workflows with your requirements that's basically our job right we, we know that the software can be like a little complex and it requires some some knowledge handout and we're here to do that like we're here to help we know that running projects tends to be hard perfection is impossible so i guess we're aiming for as much harmony in the cooperation as possible there is one question th that came in 
from Andrea regarding the two-factor authentication. If we're planning to introduce application password when the two-factor authentication is enabled. Let me take a look and quickly get familiar. What we've been using internally is the Google Authenticator, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if, if, if it's the same, but it is taking me to a Google support page. Uh, yeah, uh, Andrea, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, I think we are not able to answer right now, but uh, we might take a look and uh, get back to you. I'm just going to mention that it might be also a good idea to just send the question to support at easyproject.com. That way you're going to push it through our official channels and the uh, the best well, uh, set people in terms of the skill set and knowledge will be able to, to respond that way. Otherwise, it might be a little difficult for us to go into, into questions like this. Through the support line, we will be more than happy to help. Another question from Patricio. Could we define tasks responsible with someone external to our team, external resources, not users? Um, uh, no, uh, all the um, resources or people that are managed in the agile resource management as, uh, as well as it was with the old resource management needs to be users of easy project. So you cannot just add uh, somebody random from the street to uh, the resource management and manage uh, his time over there. I'm sure you, know, you mentioned it, but like the purpose of the, of the agile resource management is to make things as simple as possible. So even, even people that are not certified project managers with like smoothened or ironed out processes are able to actually use a tool like that and, and really like, use it for, for higher efficiency. All right, one more question then from Karsten. Are there interfaces to M365? I assume that's Microsoft 365 or Office 365. An example, creating a task for a planner. Uh, not at the moment. There is not, let's say, a prepared or predefined integration like that. Although theoretically, this is uh, definitely possible. Um, because uh, Easy Project have uh, has uh, REST API, so theoretically this is possible. Uh, it's probably again uh, good feedback for us to consider this. And just a little something from behind the curtains: we have been using a lot of tools from the Office 365. So us internally, we have like a lot of motivation to to make easy project work well with these tools. So in case that will be a question for the future, we're definitely planning to keep on supporting this option. All right, we've got that done. I've, I think I've said everything I wanted to say, to be honest. Is there anything you want to add, Jan? No, thanks. Well, in that case, I guess, the only thing that's left to be done is to thank for your guys' attention once more and have a wonderful day. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.